of all the percent questions in this video series, this one here might be the most important one. Because if you can do this question here, you should be able to do all of the questions that we have done up until this point. Whereas if you can do all of the questions that we have done up until now, it does not necessarily mean that you can do this question here. And the reason for that is, is in all of our previous question, we were given numeric values for all of our variables, except for maybe the variable that we were trying to solve for. Whereas in this question, we are given multiple variables or we are given variables that are mixed in with numeric values. And so in those other questions, you can maybe take the values that you were given, plug them into some formula that you simply memorized, and maybe you can accidentally stumble upon the right answer. Whereas in this question, you can't do that. You really have to rely on being able to make your present translations precisely in order to get this question. And so let's read it. And then let's go through our statements individually. Gordon sold a stock for X dollars on the last day of 2010. In 2011, the value of the stock rose by P percent. Subsequently, in each of the years 2012 and 2013, the stock lost two sevenths of its value. If at that point Gordon bought the stock back for the same price he had previously sold it, what is the value of P? So let's focus on, let's do a quick review. So what does P percent mean? P percent is not equal to P. Now, they are not asking us to solve for P percent. They are asking us to solve for P, but we still need to know what P percent is. So P percent, percent means divide by 100. So P percent is P over 100. And so if this second sentence here said, in 2011, the value of the stock rose by 5%. So that would mean P over 100. So our decimal value, so 5% is equal to 0 0.05. And so that would mean P over 100 is equal to 0 0.05. But P itself, P is the nominal value of the percent. And so we would have this equation here and P would be equal to just five, right? And so we want to make sure uh, that if we were to solve this equation, we want to get five for P, not 0.05. And that is why P would be equal to 0.05 times 100, which is equal to five. And so you want to set up your percent translations accurately from the beginning. So once we do get a value for P, I don't have to then think, oh, do I have to divide this by 100? Do I have to multiply it by 100? I want the value I come up with for P to, P, to be the direct value of P that they are looking for. And so I think I said before, one good thing, one thing I like about these percent increase, decrease questions is they usually give you your information in chronological order. And in this case, they literally give us it year by year, which makes it easy to organize. So if I want all of my expressions here to represent the value of the stock at the end of that year, so I got in 2010, it was worth X dollars. Then it says in 2011, the value of the stock rose by P percent. And so what does that mean? So that means I started with a value of X at the beginning of 2011, and then it increased by P percent. And so I added P percent of X to my original value of X. And then in this case, I can factor out an X and I get uh, the price of my stock is X times one plus P over 100. And so if we go back to our example, if P were equal to five, 
2011, the value of the stock rose by P percent. That means our stock should be worth. Uh, if it rose by 5 percent, it should be worth 1.05 X. And here, uh, if we plugged in 5 for P, that is what we would get. So I like this format here because it looks sort of like this format here, which is how I am used to thinking about percent increases when I am given the numbers. Subsequently, in each of the years 2012 and 2013, it lost two sevenths of its value. And so therefore the price of the stock, if it is a two sevenths decrease, the price should be five sevenths of the value at the beginning of the year. So this is my value at the beginning of 2012. By the end, it's just five sevenths of that. And so you can see every year I'm just tacking on an additional value to what I started with. So for 2013, I just got to have to add an additional five sevenths. So, so far we have a bunch of expressions. If I want to solve for P, I'm going to have to get an equation here. And this last sentence is where I get that because it says, so if at that point, Gordon bought the stock back for the same price he previously sold it. That means by the end of 2013, it was worth the same thing it started at. So it was just worth X again. And then we want to know what is the value of P. And so one thing you might notice is we have two variables in our equation and we want to solve for one of them. And normally you would need two equations to solve for two variables unless one of those variables cancels out. So the first thing I'm looking for is I want to see if my X does in fact cancel out here because I don't think we can make any more equations. We have incorporated all of the information given to us. But sure enough, it looks like if I divide each side by X, my X goes away and this just becomes one here. And so I'm left with 1 plus P over 100, this is 25 over 49, times 25 over 49 is equal to 1. And so now I'm just going to slowly move everything other than P over to the right side in order to get P by itself. And so I'll start, I'll multiply each side by 49 over 25 to get rid of this fraction. So I'm left with 1 plus P over 100 is equal to 49 over 25. And now I need to subtract a 1 from each side. So I get 1 plus P over 100 is equal to 49 over 25 minus 1. But if I see I need a common denominator here, I can write that as 25 over 25. So this gives me 1 plus P over 100 is equal to 24 over 25. And then, uh, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. Once I subtract this 1, I am left with just P over 100 on my left side. And So P over 100 is equal to 24 over 25. Now P should just be equal to 24 over 25 times 100. And instead of multiplying 24 times 100 and then dividing that by 25, I can see that 100 over 25 is just 4. So P is just equal to 24 times 4 which is 96. So P is equal to 96. And because I'm confident that we translated all of our statements correctly, I don't have to worry about, do I have to divide this 96 by 100 or do I have to multiply it by 100? 96 is the value for P. And D is our answer.
And so sometimes I think uh, even though this sec- this uh, this sentence here, so in 2011, the value of the stock rose by 96 percent. And so it rose by 0.96. Uh, but. P is still equal to just a 96. Um, and I think sometimes people, if we start with a value of X, they'll say after 2011, the value of your stock is X times one point P, which I see what they're doing. And maybe it logically makes some sort of sense, but I wouldn't want to do this because this isn't algebra. I can't really do algebra with this. And so the accurate, the precise translation is how we have it here. And this is how I want to think about it, because I know then I don't have to worry about doing anything with my value at the end. The value I get at the end is going to be exactly what the question is asking for.